In today's lesson, we're going to take a look at equivalent fractions. And equivalent, if you look at the word equivalent, it sounds an awful lot like the word equal. And when you think about fractions that are equal, there you go, you have equivalent fractions. Now, the first example, a lot of us know about one half. And say you had a pizza, and you're awfully hungry, and you're going to eat one half. There's your one half. Now, if you want to have an equivalent fraction, say you're going to eat the same part of the pizza, but you're going to divide it up in different ways. Now, I could take another cut across the pizza, and there I would have four equal slices that make up that whole pizza. Uh, so each one would be a fourth. We've talked about that before in our a lot of our fraction posts and our intro to fraction po uh, post as well. Now, if you noticed, we've got one, two pieces. So that would be two fourths, right? So two fourths and one half represent the same part of the pizza. You can see it's right there. Maybe I'll, I'll use a different color so it stands out. We've got that half of the pizza could be represented by one half or two fourths. So if you look at that, We've got equivalent fractions. Now, mathematically, you can handle that as well. If you start off with, uh, let's say, one half like we did to start with, and you multiply the top, the numerator, and the bottom, the denominator, by the same number, uh, we'll pick 2. That will give you, let's see, 1 times 2 is 2. And 2 times 2 is 4. So that will, you'll end up getting the same fraction. So if you multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same number, in this case it was 2, you are going to end up with an equivalent fraction. So you can use this idea to make a number of equivalent fractions. I mean, we could extend this out. Let me just move this down a little bit. You can extend this out. And then you could multiply, you could pick any number, really. Um, let's try something a little different here. We'll bring up some dice. Okay, so now we have, you know, a die, and we, we click on it, we come up with five. Now you can multiply the numerator and the denominator by that five. And the, the key is you want to treat the numerator and denominator the same. You're multiplying both the top and the bottom by 5. In, in essence, it's really like 5 over 5, which would be 1. And that leads you back to the identity property. And when you multiply anything by 1, like in the identity property, you're going to get the same value. You're not going to change the... Um, how much the fraction represents at all. So 2 times 5 would be... 10 in the numerator, and 4 times 5 would be 20 in the denominator. And 1 half is a great fraction to really look at. It's a benchmark fraction. We made a post about that. And anytime you have a fraction equivalent to 1 half, your numerator is going to be half of the not denominator, and that's exactly what's happening here. 10 is actually 1 half of 20, so that would equal 1 half. Now, sometimes you are given a fraction or a one uh, complete fraction. Let's, let's do something a little more complex than one. So we'll start with, why don't we go with five, uh, let's see, five eighths. And you might be given 40 as the denominator. Now, this is similar to one of the posts where we used LCM to figure a lowest common multiple, or least common multiple. And in this case, you can handle that same way. You'll think to yourself, 8 times what equals 40? Well, I know, and I bet you were thinking this too, so good for you, that 8 times 5 equals 40. And what you do to the denominator, you have to do to the numerator. We'll multiply that by 5, you get 5 times 5 equals 
25. There you have it. Pretty cool, huh? So anytime you're given a, a complete fraction like 5 eighths and then you're, then you're missing a numerator or denominator, you can figure that out, what, what the rest of the fraction would be. So let's try another example. Uh, let's go with 7 over 21 equals, oh, we'll try it this way. We, if, you're, if you're given the numerator, you can also find the denominator. So what we have is, up top here we know both of our numerators. You can see that right there. So you can think, use that to help you figure out what the denominator would be. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, I start off with 7 in my numerator over here. And it has to end up as a 1. So I can say to myself, what do I have to do to 7 to make it equal 1? So 7 divided by 7 would equal 1. And that rule applies here too. What you do to the numerator, you must do to the denominator. So we'll divide by 7. So 21 divided by 7 equals 3. And look at that. You come up with an equivalent fraction that way too. And we were only given the numerator, but we were able to really calculate using our knowledge of fractions to find that missing denominator. Let's try another one. All right, we'll go with 18. Uh, we'll go with 18 36 equals 9 over, well, we really don't know. Hmm. You could put a var variable there, like an x to represent the denominator. We'll just leave it blank for now. So what would you have to do to calculate this? If you want to pause the video, you can do that, check it out yourself, and then you know, check your work afterwards. Well, here we go. Well, I know, like I said before, we have two numerators up there. And 18, we have to go from 18 down to 1. Now I, go, I know I'm getting smaller, so in this case, I'm going to divide. Okay, So 18 divided by something equals 9. So 18 I know divided by 2, because 9 times 2 equals 18. Is the, using the inverse operation, you can do that to help you out. If you're thinking that, good job. And now, so what you do to the numerator, I sound like I'm repeating myself, but it's so true. What you do to the numerator, you must do to the denominator. So 18 divided, or times 2 would be 9. Whoa, look at that. I checked my work, and I found a mistake. So it's always good to check your work. I use the wrong operation. So whenever you're, so going from 18 to 9, I must divide by 2. And what I do to the numerator, I have to do to the denominator. Mm -hmm. So 36 divided by 2 would be 18. Now if you're not sure how to do that, you could calculate it on the side here. That's always a good idea. 36 divided by 2, 2 goes into 3 one time, 1 times 2 is 2, subtract, 3 minus 2 is 1, bring down the 6, we get 16, 2 goes into 16 8 times, 8 times 2 is 16. Not sure how to divide that out, check out our post on division, and uh, let's move on here. 36 divided by 2, indeed equals 18, so we have... 9 eighteenths as your equivalent fraction. And there you have it. When you have equivalent fractions and you're missing uh, a numerator or denominator of a second, second fraction, and there's an equal sign set between them, you can use what you know about fractions to solve for the missing den denominator or numerator. Thanks for checking out Mr. Merrick's EduBlog, and we'll see you again next time.